So, uh, Professor Carter, could you begin by sharing a bit about your educational background and what uh, led you towards your interest in statistical physics? Uh, thank you, Franco, for the interview. I was born and raised in Tehran, Iran, where I attended a Don Bosco school for 12 years through high school. Growing up, I enjoyed mathematics and science and expected to study science or engineering at the university in Iran. Somewhat unexpectedly, my father encouraged me to study abroad, and uh, that led me eventually to Cambridge University in 1976. At Cambridge, I studied natural sciences, which included classes in mathematics, chemistry, material science, as well as physics, which was really my focus. After Cambridge, I moved to MIT for graduate studies in 1979. Coming to MIT was somewhat of a leap of faith as I had been admitted to MIT without guaranteed financial support. Luckily for me, Professor Nihat Berker had joined the MIT faculty exactly that same year and was seeking students. While I had initially thought about working on things like general relativity and high energy theory, meeting Nihat redirected my interest towards statistical physics. Uh, my graduate education at MIT was benefited a lot from courses from visiting professors. Amnon Aharoni taught about uh, phase transitions and RG. Henri Orland visited and talked about disordered systems. After earning my PhD, I spent three years as a junior fellow at Harvard, which granted me considerable freedom to explore new directions. Uh, it was that freedom along with the mentorship of David Nelson and collaborations with colleagues such as Yakov Kantor, Yi Cheng Zhang, and uh, uh, Shankar that made this period particularly productive for me. Uh, okay, so uh, one of your contributions, the Carter Parisi Zhang KPZ equation, came uh, quite early in your career. Could you tell us about the origin of this work and why it has become so influential across so many fields? Okay, the KPZ work came about during my fellowship at Harvard as a postdoc. I would usually spend the summer months at Brookhaven National Labs, where Per Bach had gathered around a number of theorists for summer. One summer, I had the good fortune to connect with uh, Ye Cheng Zhang, who had joined Brookhaven soon after completing his PhD with Giorgio Parisi in Rome. Through conversations uh, with him, we started investigating an equation, possibly describing dynamics of growing surfaces, whose implications at that time were not entirely cl uh, clear to us. When I went back to Harvard and thought about it further, I noticed an important connection between this equation and a problem that I had started working with David Nelson on interfaces subject to uh, disorder. Uh, using this connection and some other uh, contacts, we eventually, over email with Jiang and Parisi, completed this work that was published in 1986. In the nearly 40 years since uh, the, it appeared, the KPZ equation has become central to our understanding of fluctuations in systems that evolve over time, but not necessarily in equilibrium. Its wide applicability comes from being perhaps the simplest equation that captures how local, noisy, and asymmetric influences shape complex behavior without relying on the details of any specific system. I feel that much like the ubiquity of the diffusion equation, the KPZ equation naturally appears whenever fluctuations build up and organize in everything from traffic flow, biological growth, to even quantum spins. There's also this cole hopf transformation that maps the problem to directed polymer and uh, makes connections to random system. And this has allowed mathematicians and physicists uh, to derive some exact results, in my case, through the replica method and describe better some aspects of this uh, universality class. Okay, so 
Uh, let's, think, uh, let's talk about uh, uh, say interdisciplinarity. Your research has covered a different range of topics. Uh, could you elaborate on this breadth of interest and share how your students and collaborators contributed to shaping uh, these diverse trajectories? Okay. Uh, so in 1986, I joined the MIT faculty. And since then, I have been extremely fortunate to have uh, uh, many good students and collaborators and uh, many scientific questions that I have explored is thanks to the creativity and energy of uh, these students, postdocs and collaborators. Uh, early on, when I joined MIT, I was still following some of the interests in my postdoc work and uh, we studied, for example, the KPZ equation and other dynamic scaling phenomena. And this line of research was done with my first batch of students, including Ernesto Medina, Terry Hua, Denis Ertash, and Reisa de Souza. In parallel, we also studied variants of the directed polymers in random media. And this exploration of new applicabilities of this directed polymer problem to systems with punch randomness involves other talented students and postdocs, including Leon Balenz, Larry Sol, Barbara Drossel, Carmen Miguel, Mohamed Kohandel, and later on, Sherry Chu. Another uh, major theme was the statistical mechanics of uh, polymers and uh, polymerized networks. This was mostly with uh, my postdoc collaborator, Yakov Kantor, with whom I have worked for many years since, and students and collaborators such as Maya Pachuski and Kei Lise contributed at the beginning to a number of aspects of this. And later on, this line of research quite naturally expanded to include uh, biological polymers. And we addressed a number of topics such as mixed charge polyampholites, polymer uh, or DNA translocation through pores, and the problem of protein knots. And this line of research involved uh, Jeffrey Chuang, Andrea Zoya, Alberto Rosso, uh, Michael Slutsky, Larf uh, Metzler, Paul Dommersness, and Peter Bernau. And uh, in particular with uh, Peter Bernard and uh, Leonid Merni, who had just joined the MIT faculty, we studied the problems of knots in proteins, which was an interesting direction of research. So having uh, uh, Leonid Merni as a, co a colleague at MIT was very important. And incidentally, the two of us have been teaching a class on applications of statistical physics to biology for the past 20 years. Uh, apart from that, there were some other brief in incursions into uh, biological systems, such as neuroscience, such as addressing uh, statistical physics of vision and synapses that I did with uh, Mehdi Yahyanejad, Payun Li, Rava da Silvera, and Christoph Hazelwanter. Another direction of research that has been quite productive and long running has been uh, related to fluctuation-induced phenomena. Initially, this was initiated with Hao Li and Ramin Golestanian, and later developed with colleague Robert Jaffe, and uh, a number of postdocs, students, Roya Zandi, Torsten Emig, Jamal Rahi, Mohamed Maghrebi, and Vlad Kolig, uh, helped explore various consequences of uh, confining thermal, quantum, or even non-equilibrium fluctuations in both soft matter settings of membranes and superfluids and electrodynamic cases of Casimir forces and radiative heat transfer. Starting in around 2000, I was fortunate to collaborate with Aru Chakrabarti, initially at Berkeley, and now he's the colleague at MIT, our joint work on immunology allowed me to learn from Arup and a number of joint students and postdocs, including Andre Kosmerlich, Tom Butler, John Barton, Shenzhen Wang, and Andre Goychak. 
given the importance of this topic to public health and vaccination, this area has uh, been growing very rapidly and there's no uh, immunophysics as a topic that people have been studying. Another uh, recent topic of interest is uh, regarding active matter where energy consumption at microscopic scales leads to unexpected macroscopic behaviors and through collaborations with Alex Solon, Yarif Kafri, and Julian Tayor, who's now at MIT, I'm also currently interested in this topic. So I apologize for the length of this overview. Uh, although long, I must have uh, left out a number of other contributions and colleagues that I apologize. Sure, sure, I, I understand. But you were recently awarded by the Boltzmann Medal. Could you speak about the significance of this award in statistical physics? So the Boltzmann Medal recognizes uh, achievements in statistical physics. I'm certainly most deeply honored by this recognition as in my view, it highlights what I believe is an exceptionally important and sometimes underappreciated area of science. Statistical physics seeks to understand how complex phenomena emerge from interactions among many components, be they atoms, molecules, cells, people, or even stars. It thus aims to extract collective results from microscopic details that are often too complicated to track. Because of this, statistical physics has extraordinary reach across topics, material science, biology, neuroscience, economics, ecology, and social sciences. My own research has partly in, uh, illustrate this breadth uh, since I have looked at polymers, immune systems, biological gro uh, growth, etc. But I feel that despite this broad relevance, statistical mechanics is not always sufficiently appreciated even within the physics community and may be overshadowed by trendier topics like particle physics, cosmology. Yet statistical physics addresses questions that are both fundamental and practical in nature. And PhDs that are trained in this field have gone on to make important impacts, not only within physics, but also across various university departments and interdisciplinary research centers. So one of my hopes in teaching and textbook writing, uh, and I know you are also involved in this, Franco, has been to communicate the reach and versatility of statistical physics. We need to better highlight this to inspire greater student interest as well as deeper public appreciation. Receiving the Boltzmann Medal is thus a welcome occasion for me to further advocate for statistical physics, emphasize its scientific place within physics, and potential to address many topics outside of physics. <laughs> Good words. So, uh, looking ahead, uh, what do you see as a productive future direction in statistical physics? And uh, finally, what are you bringing to StatFIS uh, next uh, July? There will certainly be uh, a lot of new fundamental discoveries within statistical physics and new directions and arenas of applications, which probably, if I look back at what has happened over the past 30, 40 years I have been in this field, it's not necessarily easy to predict. So I'll just mention some things that I find interesting. Uh, one of the uh, fundamental and central questions of statistical physics has been how a closed system comes to thermal equilibrium. So this topic has uh, found new relevance in connection with closed quantum systems and for example, this eigenstate thermalization hypothesis, that is how a single quantum eigenstate manifest properties traditionally associated with thermal ensembles. I think understanding this topic and associate things such as quantum entanglement is likely to provide insights into uh, how uh, thermalization occurs, how information equilibrates, and I think the relevance of this goes 
also beyond fundamental statistical mechanics, now I think to also understanding problems in quantum computation, as well as the fate of black holes. Another intriguing frontier, which has uh, come about uh, recently because of the rapid advances in artificial intelligence and large language models, is uh, how these systems are able to do things that are almost intelligent like. And I feel that statistical physics, uh, because it's a language of emergence and collective phenomena, is ideal to explore such questions like how intelligence spontaneously emerges from these systems where the underlying microscopic things that are connections of gates and elements that are connected to each other are reasonably well understood. And so how this microscopic gives rise to this uh, intelligence is something that maybe statistical physics can help understand. Uh, as for uh, what I will be talking at uh, uh, the StatPhys meeting, uh, perhaps closer to my own current interest, I think there are some interesting questions related to biological evolution in complex, dynamically changing fitness landscapes. And uh, uh, I feel that using statistical physics tools, such as energy landscapes, stochastic dynamics, we can provide insights into adaptation, speciation, and ecological interactions. And maybe I will talk about some work that we are doing recently that actually connects some aspects of uh, KPZ equation to these issues of speciation, adaptation, and fitness landscape. I hope that these examples highlight the remarkable breadth and continued vitality of statistical physics as it constantly reinvents itself and broadens itself into relevance across many scientific disciplines. So, extremely interesting. I am um, so. I don't look the say the moment of of uh, attending your talk in stat fees. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Professor Carter, and uh, see you in Florence next July. Thank you, Franco, for taking the time uh, to talk with me.